I've been at this for seven months. I've visited 26 organs so far. I feel like I have indigestion. Trying to imbibe any overarching lesson from all of these experiences is like trying to take a drink from a fire hose. The way I've been going into church after church to open myself to the space and try to channel something makes me feel like I'm some scavenging animal, a part of a natural ecosystem with none of the human features like a defined home or neighbors. I feel like I'm part of nature. I think his uh, musician is the uh, most uh, powerful gift to be a musician. Because if you are sad or if, if you are alone, you have an instrument and it is your friend. friend. And this is your uh, life um, guide or something. So I think. This is good because you cannot uh, disappoint it with your instrument. So, like a human being, a person. <laughs> yeah. something of art to the melody. You create a very magic atmosphere. All church buildings are so full of human symbolism and energy. The people who build and use them are engaging in a practice that I support. I'm not talking about Christian traditions, I'm talking about traditions as old as life itself. What is it that brings people to these buildings? It's the same sorts of questions that brought me to the healers on my grief retreat. Questions like, how can I confront my own powerlessness and walk away feeling 
intact or maybe even strong? How can I endure sharing this world with others who are different from me? How can I be a person when I don't really know almost anything? You know, what we do when we look at Jesus is we think of God in human terms. I mean, obviously, it's, it's impossible to imagine God, although, you know, artists have tried to. <laughs> but, um, and yet we can imagine and we can, in one sense, enter into the story of Jesus and even, as Jesuits do, imagine ourselves as part of that story. And you know, the Jesuits have this uh, practice of a meditation on a passage um, which encourages you to enter into the story and to say, well, what would happen if I was there? What would I have said? What would I have done? How would I have reacted? And that's uh, a part of meditative reading. Meditation came into my life as an antidote to the self-destructive habits I'd developed to feel calm but couldn't sustain anymore. I was fascinated when meditation teachers invited me to recognize that my breath and heartbeat are friends that have been with me during every experience of my entire life. The idea of incorporating my physical body into a sense of spirituality or elevated consciousness never would have occurred to me. Several spiritual paths want to disconnect from the body. Um, often natural instincts are uh, blamed for uh, uh, disconnection from spirit. I don't think that it's possible to be enlightened, so, so to say, without the inclusion without the embrace of our physical being. The effect of all this traveling on my body is starting to show. The distortions of time are small violences on my internal ecological makeup. I'm redshifted and translucent from the impact of relativity on my electromagnetic frequencies. I'll continue trying to play technically exciting music and learn to improvise and play quickly and dynamically. But I have to admit that in training with the organ, pulse with pulse, breath with breath, comes so naturally.
I've reached the Arctic Circle after having descended to the Antarctic Circle at the beginning of this trip. And it does feel a little bit like the end of the world. But to be apocalyptic is to be dated. It's just an exaggerated sense of attachment to the world that you currently have. I'm not trying to be life-affirming. So much of this is about death. The only path to enlightenment. The necessary ingredient of any true answer to any question. The feeling of disconnection and grief, prolonged and extended and projected around the world. To make the world feel magical requires unfamiliar places at the ends of the earth. Places where it's all too easy to be engulfed in that feeling of disconnection. At this point of the trip, I decide I'm only going to go places where I know someone from now on. I'm going to let that guide me. It's the only way I can continue.